In week two, we are covering measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion. Um, both involve some pretty basic calculations. Um, they can seem a little bit long. You're not expected to memorize formulas, um, so don't worry about that. And if I tell you, or if you're assigned something that says, you know, calculate the variance, just go to your book and take, don't be overwhelmed, just take the formula step by step um, and follow along in, with examples in the book. And if something is unclear to you, just let me know. Um, as far as measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion, these are univariate analysis, which means that we do them on one variable. You can't look at the mean of a relationship between variables. Um, so if you're looking at the mode or the median or the mean, which are measures of central tendency, you're talking about, you look at them, those measures one variable at a time. Um, so the mode, the median, and the mean are the three types of um, measures of central tendency, which one or which ones you use will depend on the level of measure of the variable. So last week I talked about the importance of um, uh, knowing and understanding levels of measure. Um, this is part of the reason why. If you don't know what level of measure something is or if you get that wrong, you're going to compute a statistic that isn't going to be correct. It's not going to make any sense. The mode, pretty easy. It's the most common category. Um, Technically, you can have a mode for nominal, ordinal, or interval ratio. Um, interval ratio, we usually don't do a mode simply because when you're talking about the most common category, interval ratio, don't, they don't have categories. Um, so typically, although we can do the mode for all three levels, um, we do them for nominal or ordinal. Um, so if you have, let's say you're looking at year in school, that's the variable you're using, and you're going to measure that as freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior. And let's say you have 812 freshmen, 650 sophomores, 594 juniors, and 515 seniors. The mode is the category with the most people, the most common category. So in this example, it would be freshmen. Because freshmen, there were 812 freshmen, and the next most was 650. So the modal category is the most common category or the category with the most observations in it. So in this case, it, the modal category is freshman. The median is the middle of the data. It is the 50th percentile. It splits the data in half. So if you order all of your data, it, you, you put your data in order. So let's say you take those freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors, you put all 812 freshmen, then all 650 sophomores. And you just, at this, if you're thinking about this in your head, just think you would put F for freshman 812 times, then S for sophomore 650 times, then J for junior 594 times, and then let's say SR for senior 515 times. So you've got this huge string of data. That 50th percentile, the midpoint of that data, half the observations are below that the 50th percentile and half are above it, wherever that midpoint, the physical midpoint of the data, if you actually had it in order is, that is the median. Um, half the observations are above it, half the observations are below the median. So to obtain the median, theoretically, if you only had a handful of observations, you would put your data in order. That's the first thing you do when you're calculating the median. You have to have the data in order, and then you take the middle observation. So if I had exam scores, and let's say they were, I had four students, and their exam scores were 90, 70, 60, and 80. Those four scores to find the median, I would put them in order first from lowest to highest. So it would go 60, 70, 80, 90. Now they're in order. The midpoint of the data, it's 70 and 80 because there are only four observations. So there's no exact midpoint. So what you then would do would be, Okay, 70 and 80 are the two middle observations. I'm going to add them, so 70 plus 80 is 150, and I'm going to divide by two. So the median would be 75. Now let's say I had 60, 70, 74, 80, and 90. Those are my observations in order. The midpoint, because there are five observations, so it would be the third. Two observations are below it and two are above it. Then the midpoint would be that 74. That would be the median. So when you have an even number, and your book talks about calculating this, when you have an even number of observations, you take the two middle ones, you add them and divide by two.
For median, you can use median for ordinal or interval ratio level variables. You cannot have median for faith group, gender, um, race. There's no median race. Um, you have to be able to order your data. You can't put men and women in order because the order is meaningless. You can't put Catholic, Protestant, Methodist, and other in order. The order is meaningless. So for median, ordinal, or interval ratio only, you cannot calculate the median for nominal level variables. The final measure of central tendency is the mean, which is the statistical average. To figure out the mean, you just add all of your observations and divide by the total number. So for those four exam scores, 90, 80, 70, 60, um, you add them all up, which gives you 300, and then you divide by how many observations there were, 90, 80, 70, 60. There's four observations. So you take 300 and you divide by four. You get 75. It just so happens in this case that the mean and the median were the same. That's not always going to be the case. In fact, oftentimes it's not the case. Um, so, again, to calculate the mean, you add up all the observations. So if there are 150 observations, you would add up 150. And then you divide by however many there are. So if you have 150, you would divide by 150. For the mean, you can only compute the mean for interval ratio level variables. <clears throat> there are a couple of times for your project, I'm going to have you compute statistics like the mean for even ordinal level variables. Um, and I tell you, I, you know, I acknowledge the fact that you're not supposed to be doing this, but I want you to go through the exercise. Um, but so you need to know, like if you're talking about an assignment or an exam, you can only calculate the mean for interval ratio level or continuous variables. You cannot calculate the mean or you should not calculate the mean for nominal or ordinal level variables. As I mentioned, there are times I ask you to make an exception, but just know that you're making an exception, that you're doing something that you're really not supposed to be doing. Um, make sure that you understand in the book the difference between positive and negative skew um, and how that is related to the shape of a distribution. Um, moving on to Chapter 5, measures of dispersion. Again, these, are, um, these measures are um, ones that you would compute for univariate analysis, which means you would compute them for each single variable. Um, there are different ways of looking at dispersion. One is kurtosis. Kurtosis just has to do with how peaked or how flat a distribution is. Lepto, and this is just a term you're going to need to remember. Leptokurtosis are when the values cluster together very tightly, so there's not a whole lot of variation. Most of them are squeezed in together. Um, so if we know, if I told you the mean exam score in a class of 100 of my students is 75%. And I told you that the distribution of exam scores was le displayed leptokurtosis. What that would mean is that a lot of people scored right around 75%. You may have had some at 74%, some at 73%, some at 70%, a lot of them right at 75%, um, some at 76%, some at 78%, but you're going to get most of the people are in around that mean value. Platy kurtosis is a distribution that is flat and spread out. So if I told you the mean exam score um, in one of my classes is a 75% and the distribution displayed platy kurtosis, it was platy, kurto platy kurtosis, that would mean that the scores were all over the place. I might have had a 50, a 55, a 75, a 100, a 90, a 94. So they're just all over the place from, you know, possibly as low as zero if somebody didn't take the exam all the way up to 100. They just, people were all over the board, but the mean ended up being right in the middle. Where leptokurtosis, the mean's here, but a lot of people scored right around that mean. Um, the only measure of dispersion that should be used for categorical, which remember are nominal and ordinal variables. Um, the only measure that should be used for categorical variables is the variation ratio. Um, the way that you interpret that, it's quite simple. Um, the number you get for the variation ratio is the percent of observations that are not in the modal category. Um, you do that, you take one, and your book has this formula, one minus whatever the frequency of the mode is, remember the frequency is just how many people fall into that category, over the sample size. And your book goes through an illustration of that. It's very straightforward. 
you divide and then you take one minus whatever you divide. The, it's the frequency over the sample size, the frequency of the mode divided by the sample size. So if most people in my class scored an 80 on the exam, um, well, this is assuming that, um, that I had categories. So let's say um, most people scored between an 80 and an 85. That's my category. Um, and let's say I had 100 students. Um, if 50 of 100 students scored in that category, then 50 would be the frequency because that's the modal category. And I had 50 students score in that category over 100 students. So that's 50 divided by 100, which is just half. One minus a half is half. So what that tells me is that 50% fell outside the modal category, which makes sense because I just told you half the people were in the mode. That's how you compute the um, variation ratio. Don't worry about the terminology too much, but you need to know that proportions range from zero to one. Um, if you subtract a proportion from one, you're going to get the proportion that are not in that category, which should make sense. So if I was looking at religion, and I measured it as Christian, atheist, or other, and I know that the proportion of Christians was 0 0.70, then if I took 1 minus 0 0.70, I would get 0 0.30, and I would know that 0 0.30 um, is the proportion of people not, who are not Christian. Um, other measures of dispersion that we use are for continuous or interval ratio level variables. Remember I said that the variation ratio is the only one that we use for categorical data. Um, so if it's not categorical, it would be continuous in terms of levels of measure. Um, one measure is the range. The range is very easy. It's the high value minus the low value. So if, again, talking about exam scores, if the low score on the exam is 52, the high score is 100. Some people report the range and just say the range is from 52 to 100. Um, if you're looking for the single digit, like if you're answering a multiple choice question and the question is what is the range, 100 minus 52 is 48. The range is 48. Um, <clears throat> the variance and standard deviation are the final two. These get a little bit complex. Again, make sure that you know um, for your exam and for the chap end of chapter assessments um, that variance and standard deviation can only be used for interval ratio level data. Um, the variance is the average square distance of each case from the mean. And I still remember having to learn that definition. Um, and then the definition for standard deviation, which is the square root of the average square distance of each case from the mean. We had to repeat that over and over and over again. And if this tells you anything, it has been decades since I've had that class, and I still have that definition memorized. The average square distance of each case from the mean, the square root of the average square distance of each case from the mean. But the way we had to learn it was just repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. So I would recommend, um, I don't require you to memorize definitions, but if it helps you just in terms of conceptually trying to understand what is this, you're looking at average deviation of observations from the mean. Um, so hopefully, if you can repeat it to yourself or just kind of think about it conceptually, hopefully that will help you. Um, <clears throat> so if you look at exam scores, if you have four exam scores, 100, 90, 85, and 50. The mean of that is 81.25. Then, so I'm talking about variance now. So I would say, okay, if the mean is 81.25, and if you look in your book, you'll see a column on a table when they're doing these computations. XI is just the observation, and X with the bar over it is the mean. So for the exam score of 100, XI is that observation, which is just, it's 100. Somebody scored 100. Excuse me. So you would say 100 minus, what's the mean? 81.25. Okay, for XI, what's the next observation? Well, I told you it was 90. So you would say 90 minus 81.25. The third observation was 85 minus 81.25. And then the last one was someone scored a 50. So it would be 50 minus 81.25. You would subtract each of those. So 100 minus 81.25, 90 minus 81, all the way down to 50. You need to square that number. And so your next column would be whatever that subtraction is, and then you would square it. So if the number was 18.75, you would take squaring it means you multiply it by itself. 
So you would take 18.75 times 18.75, and you would write that in the next column. And then you would square 90 minus 81.25, so that's 8.75. Then you would, and you can use a calculator for these um, calculations. You would take 8.75 times 8.75. And you do that for each observation. Then at the bottom, you total all of those squares. So after you subtracted them and squared them, then you add up all of those, um, you sum all of those numbers. And then what you have, but the problem is you now have an interpretation of units squared. So I'm saying the average square distance of each case from the mean, I'm talking about exam scores, exam scores squared. That interpretation doesn't make sense. That's why we take the square root. So when we're interpreting the data, we can get back to just talking about exam scores, not exam scores squared. Um, so taking the standard deviation, it's actually quite easy. Once you know how to do the variance and you get that total of all the squared numbers, all you do is take the square root of that. And that gives you the standard deviation. Um, and I told you, yeah, the standard deviation is the square root of the average square distance of each case from the mean. Um, I hope that this has made some sense to you. Like I said, don't be overwhelmed by the calculations. Um, make sure that you understand what is happening in each column. Make sure you understand things like x with the bar over it is the mean. And make sure you know how to calculate the mean. Um, make sure that you know that x with the sub i, that's just that observation. So if I said, um, if we were looking at crime rates in a city, like murders per 100,000, and it was 8.4 or something like that. 8.4 would be the observation. That's x sub i. Um, so x sub i is just the observation minus the mean is, you know what the mean is, it's just the statistical average. Squaring something means you multiply it by itself. When they say take the sum of the squares, then you add all of those squared numbers. Um, and then when you're done to get the standard deviation, you, whatever that number is at the bottom, you would type that into a calculator and take the square root of it. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully you guys are pretty clear. Um, what are the measures of central tendency? What are the measures of dispersion? And I think it would be really helpful right now if you could make a chart of these measures. So mode, median, mean variance ratio, range, variance, and standard deviation, and then have those listed in a column, and then across the top of a paper, write nominal ordinal interval ratio, and then put an X for where you would use each test. So for mean, you would put an X under interval ratio only. Same thing with variation and standard deviation and range. Um, for median, you could do, you would put the X in um, ordinal and interval ratio. Um, for mode, you would put an X in all three. So I think it would be helpful for you to have a chart so you know when it's appropriate to use which statistical measure. Um, let me know if you have questions, and I will continue to do these oral lectures each week. Um, I hope that they help you. Um, if there's any additional assistance I can provide or something different you'd like to see in these oral lectures, just let me know.